So he has a chapter on that that says never ask a why question because people can interpret a why question as being, um, you know, somewhat confrontational, right? So I changed my question from why do you say that to what makes you say that? See, it doesn't, it's not as confrontational, is it? So when the adjuster says um, any amount of nonsense, you know, this parapet wall doesn't need to be flashed, whatever they say. Okay. Then you ask the question, what makes you say that? And then you can tag it with help me understand. Man, it's like a, these statements, it's not what you say, but how you say it. These statements work like ninja word tricks. Help me understand, you know, and by the way, you actually want to understand their position because if it's just a tactic, they can tell. But if you seriously are trying to understand where they're coming from, then they can tell that as well. It, so back in the day, 35 years ago, uh, Stephen Covey wrote a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I can't recommend that book highly enough. One of his habits was seek first to understand and then be understood. In fact, Abraham Lincoln used to do this when he was a lawyer is that he would spend an, a, a considerable amount of time trying to understand where the opposing attorney was coming from and understanding their position so that he could dismantle it and, and make it look like what it is but he spent a considerable amount of time understanding where they were coming from. So we can do the exact same thing. Seek first to understand and then be understood. It's the same thing in sales. Um, and if you have a prospective client as a PA, uh, uh, as a contractor, plaintiff attorney, what you do is you do a differential diagnosis, like a, like a doctor, all right? A doctor, when you go into a doctor's office, they don't make a bunch of statements. They ask you a bunch of questions. They start off with broad questions. And depending on your answer, they're going to narrow down the next question, the next question. And then next thing you know, they have a differential diagnosis. You have diverticulitis. Here's the solution to your problem, A, B, C, D, and E. And because they're the subject matter expert, the authority, you're going to do A through E if you want the solution to your problem. It's the exact same thing in sales. It's the exact same thing in the art of persuasion. And then you use the, the number one form of persuasion is emotional word pictures. You tell stories. Uh, facts tell, stories sell. And so you tell a brief story. You know what, um, Tim, the adjuster, Mrs. Jones here reminds me of a client, Mrs. Smith. And then you just tell a, a real quick 30 second um, story. And the purpose of the emotional word picture is for the adjuster to make an emotional connection to the story. And it reaches their heart, not their head, but their heart. That's the beauty of emotional word pictures. Telling stories is it circumvents the intellect and goes to the heart. And now you're tugging on their heartstrings. And the chances of them agreeing with you is greatly increased versus making a bunch of statements and being argumentative, which does not work.